All right, welcome to the second example for Physics 125, Chapter 1. In this example, the new trick that we're showing is what you should do if you have two different numbers in the problem. You can't use both as your starting point. And so we have to identify which one is giving us a conversion factor that we can use in the problem. So for this example, a jet can travel 280 yards on a gallon of fuel. Find the gallons needed to go 2,000 kilometers. So if we think about the situation that we're looking at here, the specific trip that we are taking is the one that is 2,000 kilometers long. And so we have, as our starting point, 2,000 kilometers, and we want to turn that into gallons of fuel. To do so, for this particular problem, we actually have to define a new conversion factor. And so a conversion factor given to us for this particular problem, along with all of our standard um, conversion factors, would be that first piece of information that 280 yards is equivalent to one gallon of fuel. By deciding that that is a piece of information about this jet, now we can move on to our standard setup. We have as a starting point 2,000 kilometers, and we want to turn that into gallons. All right, so our starting point, we put in our train tracks, 2,000 kilometers. And we realize that gallons is not a length unit in general. The reason that gallons is going to show up is because of this new conversion factor we talked about. So in our minds, we should keep track of the fact that we're trying to get kilometers to turn into yards. So if we look at our list of options, we could say that 1.609 kilometers is equal to one mile. There's several different ways that you could do this, so I'm just going to show us one of them. And that one mile is 50 to 80 feet. And then there are three feet in one yard. So let's get that with the train tracks so we can see what's on the top and the bottom. Normally I do that as we go. And just for ease of seeing what's going on here, let's go ahead and change the color so that we can cross off kilometers because it shows up on the top and bottom. We can cross off miles because it shows up on the top and the bottom. And we can cross out feet because it shows up on the top and the bottom. Now we see that we have the yards that our special conversion factor is looking for. And so because yard shows up on the top, we'll put our 280 yards equals one gallon of fuel in our train tracks. And that allows us to cross off yards on the top and the bottom. Gallons is the unit that we're trying to end up with. So that's great. It's on the top like we expected it to be. And so now all we have to do is multiply everything together. We have 2,000 times 5280. And on the bottom we have... 1.609 times 3 times 280. Always remember the um, parentheses around this. And when we put that into our calculator, we get 7,813. I'm going to round to three significant figures. And that's gallons of fuel. And that's our final answer. Now for this particular problem, there are a lot of different ways that you could get to the same correct final answer. If you started with the same steps here, 
creating the conversion factor, which is a skill that we are building as we go. So if that wasn't immediately obvious, that's perfectly fine. That's why these examples are here. If you started with 2,000 kilometers and tried for gallons, you might have gone from kilometers to meters, from meters to feet, and then feet to yards, and that would still get you to the same correct final answer. Another method that students, especially students who have had conversions before, is you may have turned that 280 yards into kilometers. And I want to show us how that really works. So I'm going to scroll down on the page so I can show us another option here, a different option, because I really want to highlight one of the common mistakes that happens um, with this second option. It's not a bad choice, but you need to be cognizant of what units you have. So some students take the 280 yards and are trying to get it into kilometers because that's 280 yards per gallon. So let's see what that looks like. One yard is three feet. Just to highlight, you can use different methods. I will do that um, other way of getting to kilometers. So 3.281 feet in one meter and then 1,000 meters in one kilometer. Okay, so I'm gonna do this. And first, before we do any of that, we wanna follow our units. This is one of the things that can absolutely help you keep track of everything, especially if you feel like you're struggling with these problems. Units are not sneaky. They will cancel if they show up on the top and the bottom, and they will stick around if they're not canceled. All right, so when we plug all that into our calculator, we get 0 0.256 kilometers. Now, here's where students, especially if you're going too quickly, can make a mistake. This was really yards per gallon to start out with, and that's still around. And so this is kilometers per gallon. The most common thing I see students do, and I'm just going to write wrong so that we know not to do it, <laughs> but the most common thing I see students do is they take this 0 0.256 kilometers per gallon, and they just multiply it by 2,000, because that's also in the problem. But I want you to look at these units. What units do we end up with if we just take all that hard work we did and multiply it by 2,000? We end up with kilometers squared per gallon. The units are showing us that something went wrong. And so instead, if we wanted to use this method correctly, instead of doing it this incorrect way, we can use that hard work that we had um, gotten with this 0 0.256 kilometers per gallon, we would have to take the 2,000 kilometers and divide it by 0 0.256 kilometers per gallon. Because kilometers will now show up on the top and the bottom in equal amounts, the gallons is here on the bottom of the bottom of the fraction, so it will show up on the top in our final answer. And we get 7,810 7, gallons. We will get to the same final answer. And so I want to point something out really important here. If you prefer this method, that is fine. The problem that, I, that we see every single semester, no matter how acutely we try to point it out, is we see students who rush through their homework and then they do things like this and the units, they just write out as gallons and that is not the same thing. Kilometers squared per gallon can't just magically show up as gallons because that's the unit you want it to end up with. Following your units around in the problem will save you from making mistakes like this. And so to summarize, you can use either of the methods shown here, but the one that we started with that uses a single 
train tracks from start all the way to finish, where we can track our units quite easily, that's the one that is going to make it the smoothest experience possible for anyone who is learning unit conversions from scratch in this semester, in this class. A lot of students who have some practice use this second example, and so I do want to show that it's a valid method. But I also need us to be aware that this is by far the most common mistake on a problem like this one uh, when students are going through this method. So just be aware of the possible sticking points. Any trick that will ever come up on a homework or quiz or test shows up in lecture first. And so if you're willing to make notes to yourself on what to look for, um, that's really the the best way to use these examples is not to try to memorize these specific situations start to finish, but to recognize what we're highlighting in each example and why it is specifically included. So I will see you in the next examples for chapter one.